the glory of God in us. That, that's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. And it's absolutely astonishing. Almighty God created the physical universe by his word and sustains the universe by his, the word of his power. He's truly awesome. And the scriptures tell us that no one has ever seen God. God lives in a, in a in unapproachable light. The written testimony gives us some magnificent visions of God, but even they do not show his full glory. God's ways and his thoughts are far higher than ours. He is beyond our understanding. His greatness no one can fathom. And yet the same awesome God lives in you and I. How amazing is that? He lives in each individual who has accepted Jesus Christ and received the Holy Spirit. That concept is so staggering that it's difficult to grasp and this is why many haven't come to uh, recognize the revealing of Christ within them. We haven't perceived it or realized it yet, but it's been there all the time. Just waiting for that unveiling to come. And this is what the Holy Spirit is leading us all to. So it doesn't matter whether we feel his presence or not, it's got nothing to do with that. It's knowing that he's there all the time. In the Messiah's prayer the night before he was crucified, he said, I pray also for those who will believe in me, that all of them may be one, just as you and I, just as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, one with the Messiah and Almighty God. How amazing is that? And to say that God is in us seems astonishing, but it's the written testimony of Christ in the in believers in the past is there for us all to see. And the, how <clears throat> the spirit within acknowledges and testifies the witnesses that Christ is in us. And this is our proclamation to the world. If anyone acknowledges that Christ is the Son of God, lives in him and he in God. If we love one another, God lives in us. Whoever lives in love, lives in God, and God in him. We know that we live in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, and all those things are one. He is God, he dwells in us. Jesus said that we will know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Paul wrote, you yourselves are God's temple, and God's Spirit lives in you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God. Christ is also in us, and if we will abide, live in him, he will abide in us. And what comes out of our mouth shows to the extent that he is abiding in us. God has made known to those who believe in him this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And many brothers and sisters are pro proclaiming that hope of glory within the body of Christ, within the church within the citizens of the kingdom to proclaim Christ in us, Father in us, all in one. And Paul wrote, have I been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
God has made us alive with Christ. <clears throat> he was testifying the Messiah was within him just exactly as that we are doing today. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. And if the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Sin doesn't exist in those Christ lives in because he couldn't live in an unholy place. But you are being declared righteous through the mercy of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. How great is that? Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness, not our own righteousness, because it's his righteousness, his mercy, his love that's done it all. We haven't done a thing. Can you believe that? For all our filthy rags, he's gone and done all those wonderful, beautiful things for us because he loves us. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Praise to the Father. When Solomon built the magnificent temple of God, he prayed, but will God really dwell on earth with men? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built, Solomon said. <clears throat> but now God lives in each believer. His plan fulfilled. My body, your body, is a temple on which Almighty God dwells, whether we know it or not. And he is prodding and nudging every one of us to tell us, he says, hey, I'm here. I'm here with you, waiting for you to acknowledge me, waiting for you to proclaim that I am here. In the temple there was a holy of holies where God was thought to dwell. Only the high priest could enter in. Because of Messiah's sacrifice on the cross, hallelujah, the curtain ripped in two, the covering ripped open, our eyes unveiled, opened, <laughs> to reveal him in us, and we can all approach the throne of grace with confidence into the true place of worship, not made by human hands. It doesn't exist in bricks and mortar, or the things of this world. Father is showing us and the sons and daughters stepping forward in confidence to proclaim that now. We now are the temple God is in us. We have him with us continuously. We don't need to seek his presence, although we do, we do want to seek his presence because we want to be near him all the time. But we don't need to do it because he's already here. <laughs> Always. All too often in our Christian life, many of us pray and cry out for what we already have. Oh, our, our pathetic fleshly state doesn't, our eyes just are not open to everything. We cannot see. Open in, often in the church or other places, we might ask God to manifest his presence. And our spirit cries out with utterances we don't understand or even know sometimes. This is good. There are times when God does manifest himself in it, when according to his own wishes and desires, whatever he wants to, in whatever form, that, that's his business. And it's not for us to speak against people who say that. And it's good to seek those experiences and allow God's manifest presence to work in us. But what these scriptures are saying is that God's presence is always with us. Always. Whether we are aware of it or not. When we're going through the bad times because he is loyal and true and faithful. When we're sending our socks off, he is not going to turn his back on you. 
Jesus said, where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Strength and power and gathering together in his name. God is with us and we're not alone. It's very important to know because there may be occasions where we are alone, separated from everybody and everything through our situations. We may be imprisoned. We may be taken captive by whatever. Or some poor brothers and sisters in, in the Far East chained up for years on end, alone. God is still with us. And just to make it clear, I am not saying that we are gods, because we can never be equal to God. The God who is in us is the same and only true God, who has existed for all eternity, and who is separate from the creation, because God is the creator. I don't want to be God. I just want to be near him. I don't know about you. We humans are created beings. And we humans can exercise such power as God chooses to give us. And for only as long as we continue to abide in Christ. Messiah said, apart from me you can do nothing. We're part of Christ's body. We're closely and intimately related to Christ through whom the universe was created and we're all intimately related to each other which is very important we're all baptized into one spirit and one body forget forget some of the ideas we all we all have because in the end every man will be a liar <laughs> just so god can be found true But we would still proclaim the goodness and the mercy of the Father from Jesus Christ, no matter what. Paul said we're part of each other, just as the hand, the foot, the eye, the ear, and the other human bodies are part of each other. The body of Christ, each one of us is part of it. In Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We all belong to each other. <coughs> we might be separated by thousands of miles, but we all belong to each other, brothers and sisters. And we're all obligated to one another in whatever way is required, and especially obligated in love for one each other. We will, in all things, grow up into him. And this is what the <coughs> keeps the body joined together. Because he is the head. And we're the members of that body. So being in unity is very important. Little squabbles we can deal with. But what we must not do is deny deny another man or woman's testimony whosoever proclaims Jesus Christ has come in the flesh resurrected and ascended to heaven is the rock we all stand on We often speak of wanting a closer relationship with God. We already have it. <coughs> but we're always trying to get closer and closer to the Lord. <coughs> we always want those jewels and pearls that he reveals to each one of us in his own way to each person. We have to recognize it and live in the relationship we have already. Not looking up to the sky. 
asking them to come. We have to proclaim and testify with our mouths that Christ is in, is within. Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, they follow me. The rel religious leaders, way back in the day, didn't understand because of their heart condition. The Holy Spirit, our teacher and guide, he will teach you all things and guide you in all truth. No one can mislead you. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is to come. He tells us the thoughts of God enables us to understand spiritual things. <clears throat> we live by the Spirit, in spirit and truth. We drink the Spirit. Our food is the Spirit. He speaks to us all the time in a knowing. Some people will speak audibly, some it's just a knowing about what is true. The Father is working in us to carry out his purpose, to glorify himself within us so the whole world can see. Keep on working out our salvation. Keep on seeking the kingdom. Keep knocking, seeking and asking every day. Forget about the world. Become innocent as doves. Living in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, so we can control our soul and flesh. And we won't be, be slaves to our sinful nature, which is always there. It's, the sinful nature is always there, but the spirit is always there. And we become slaves to one or the other. And we have to make that change, that crossover. To leave one and enter into the other. But they will always be a conflict with each other. Until that fleshly spirit dissolves till flees and it will do and the result of learning to live by the spirit is the fruit of the spirit the love the joy the peace the patience the kindness the goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control beautiful beautiful um, <clears throat> Um, beautiful ways to be living your life and we will walk in the fullness of all those things and people will be amazed that there's still people like that as the darkness grows those fruitages of the spirit will come forth as light And so we can have the full confidence that we're being transformed into God's likeness, into his personality. Participating in the divine nature. Christ, in Christ, all the fullness of the day that he lived in bodily form. And we've been given the fullness of Christ. And so a few of us have mentioned the word metamorphosis, and it's in the written testimony. It speaks of a metamorphosis, a change from a caterpillar to a butterfly. The old into the new. A new, a new creation, a new earth. The old gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's beautiful, brothers and sisters. Those beautiful pearls have come through come through and when we feel them within us 
the joy just erupts inside us like a volcano. It's marvellous, isn't it? It's marvellous. And we have the full confidence, the full confidence of Christ in us. And most of us didn't know it all our lives. Some brothers and sisters did. But many of us didn't know it. I was one of them. I didn't know it. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't realise it. I didn't understand it. But now I do. And I have the confidence to proclaim, to speak, to testify Christ in us. And this is a marvellous blessing for every human being. Still available, still available. That grace, God's grace upon all. Still available for all. When the days of distress, people will be needing grace. And they will be needing love and mercy from those who are walking in the fullness of God's grace and mercy to give it back to them not standing over them, digging a hole for them to climb in. Yeah, we overcome the world all right. We just let the world go along, get on with it, while we're walking in the Spirit and enjoying the fruitage of the Spirit and enjoying the fellowship and the oneness with the Messiah and the Father. And the written testimony is another witness. We have two witnesses of Christ in us. We have the written witness and the spiritual witness. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have heard of God, and you are not your own? For there are three that bear record in heaven, Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. And it's right there that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are all one. That means that if the Holy Spirit is in you, <laughs> or if Jesus is in you, then God is in you. Free them. Free in one. The dwelling place within, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I'm feeling it now. Know ye, know, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you and I'm quoting your scriptures here, I'm not giving you the, the books or the numbers. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. These are all pearls and jewels. I've been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me and you, brothers. Whoever loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and my Father and I will come to him and live with him. Let no one ever try and snatch that away from you. And many people will, there'll be many vipers who haven't failed to recognize Christ within them will deny him within you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see, you will see me, perceive, realize, because I live, you will live. At that day you will know that I am in my Father. And you in me, and I in you. It keeps coming, it keeps, te keeps telling us. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit itself. Unless you abide in me, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, you in me, 
that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ he is not his Whoever eats my flesh, drinks my blood, has eternal life, I will raise him up on that last day. For the flesh is food, my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him, brothers and sisters. The written testimony has been proclaiming for 2,000 years that Christ is in every believer. And we haven't seen it, we haven't recognized it, it hasn't been proclaimed, but it's going to be shouted from the rooftops as many step forward out of the shadows to proclaim it. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, you will live. And on that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Oh, it's beautiful, brothers and sisters. It's beautiful. Let's go on. We are hard-pressed on every side. Pressures from everywhere. But we're not crushed. We're perplexed. We're sometimes, my own words, sometimes confused. But we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Christ also may be manifested <laughs> in our body for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus sake that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh it's as plain as day brothers and sisters and we've read those scriptures hundreds of times we've never realized it we've never acknowledged it we've never proclaimed it we've never testified of it Let's go on. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? <laughs> Unless you are disqualified. And you can only disqualify yourself because he will never leave you. Peace and love, brothers and sisters. There are many more scriptures like that. Christ in you. Rejoice. <laughs>